this boot, let me just say uh, there's always been all that talk about compiling MS DOS and blah blah blah. So I don't know why, but today I thought I'd do something different, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to build it under OS2. So we've already built it native under Windows, we've used DOSBox, we've built it under DOS. But what about the future of DOS? Yes, OS2. So my A drive I should have, just a blank disk, but more importantly it's got the um, DOS4 boot sector. Uh, so we go Proj, DOS4. We just set up an environment variable. This is slightly different than the existing one, but not that more complicated. Uh, to show that we're actually doing this, let's have some fun. Let's make sure this is uh, the one on a trip. This is SG minus R. We're going to edit that. So let's go ahead and prove that we're doing this. We're going to change the branding. So we're going to find Microsoft. And we're going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go ahead and add something silly like uh, 2024. Okay, let me just insert some spaces so that this has some hope of kind of lining up. Find the next Microsoft. That's XMS. That one doesn't matter. Uh, let's ask version 4. And I'm just going to go ahead and put OS2. Save this as plain text. So basically, we've defaced the, uh, the messages. <laughs> so no, it's us. And I'm going to come out here, make sure it's clean. So if you notice it uses RM now, we can't use delete because under OS2, if the file isn't there, delete returns failure and it breaks the make process. What a joy. Uh, just to show, I'm using OS2 version 2 with the uh, 6100 fix pack. So this is pretty, uh, pretty base. So let's compile. And I've uh, set it up to use the 386 MASM instead of the old, uh, you know, 286 Intel one. So it theoretically should run faster being 32-bit. Some of the programs are still DOS-based. It's mostly for manipulating the uh, messages. So you'll see the screen flash a few times. I altered all the uh, executables for compiling to run in a window because otherwise this thing flashes like crazy, going in and out of full screen. And uh, it really, uh, really upsets OS2. I guess to do it this quickly and this much. So I think this takes um, a couple minutes. I think three last time I timed it. So you see we're on the commands. We're already up to mode. It's kind of hard to see where we are status-wise, other than it calls MASM quite a lot. So we just patiently wait. All right, when we're doing the code pages, so coming around the end for being done, so that means we're in the device drivers. And it should be the 386 memory, the select program, which I still should figure out one day, but not today. All right, there's the 386 memory manager. Now we're done. Okay. So now that we've compiled our DOS, we're still going to run the CPY A drive. And this copies the uh, files in the correct order so that a generic, boot, a generic disk with the right boot sector will be able to boot it. So this just takes a moment. So while that's thinking, I want to prep another virtual machine so we can boot it. So we're going to go ahead and eject the A. Uh, then I should be able to do this. 
boot it into another virtual machine, boot from floppy. And there we go, compiled under OS2. So it's definitely the one we just built. <laughs> so if we run fdisk, and you can see it's MS OS2 version 4. So this is the where you can see where the files get altered. So we're going to go ahead and create a primary DOS partition. We're going to reboot, go back to the floppy, format c colon slash s. Boom. We go to the DOS directory, copy everything from the A drive. Now we don't need msdos.sys anymore. Let's make sure I put a command com in place. That's good. So now we can just to reset this emulator, boot from the hard drive. So the reason I do this again, this way it puts down the new proper boot sector and stuff that we compiled. So that we format the floppy again under itself. And now we have a floppy that we fully compiled all by ourselves. So. I can reboot again. I guess it's kind of pointless, but yeah, there we go. So we compiled uh, MS-DOS version 4 from within OS2. I have no idea what they actually used at Microsoft, but I can tell you definitely if I was there, yeah, I would have uh, I definitely would have been looking at something like this because, wow, that's a lot more efficient than trying to compile this thing native. Uh, so if I close that and go back here, I just remembered that if I grab that floppy disk, there should be an option under OS2, version 2, to boot from the A drive. There we go, DOS from A. Oh, I double clicks too slow. Yeah, how about that? So you can actually boot up your uh, OS2 that you compiled. From within. The only problem, of course, is how do you get out of a uh, full screen? It's alternate enter, I think. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. It's my fault for, uh, I guess, just playing with fire. But, anyways, yeah. So, there we go. MS DOS compiled, booted, and rebooted under itself from OS2. So just more of a, wow, isn't that neat? But um, yeah, not much of a deep dive. So I'll upload the, uh, the files and projects on archive.org um, later on and uh, update the uh, information. So if anyone else wants to build it under OS2, you can do it as well. So enjoy.